Hello there, time for a highly requested celebrity makeup bag and someone whose beauty style is as recognizable as her music. If you're new to this series on my channel, I take a star whose beauty style I admire and research them to see which products we have in common. No shopping, just trying to find out if we share any favorites or similar products. Music sensation Taylor Swift needs no introduction, nor does her signature red lipstick and winged liner look. It's something she's worn for many years since the early days of her career. A smoky shadow, dramatic lashes, or winged liner to emphasize her slightly feline eye shape. And although we've seen her transform her hair and makeup looks many times in the past decade, I personally like the fact that she generally has quite a recognizable beauty style, like the makeup equivalent of a signature scent. Taylor was not an easy person to research, but I powered through for the sake of our mutual love of red lipstick. She almost exclusively works with makeup artist Laurie Turk, who doesn't post product breakdowns online like many makeup artists do these days. They're her beauty secrets, she doesn't owe any of us that info, but it meant I could only track down a tiny bit from Laurie and mostly found information Swift super fans have shared, plus a couple of products I personally spotted in her Netflix documentary. This is of course an imagined look inside her makeup bag, I haven't seen it myself, I wish, but all sources for this information will be listed listed in the description box below as usual. Let's get into it. In this first category, I have a couple of similar product suggestions because I didn't have exact matches with Taylor, but hopefully it inspires you to look for ways to channel her style with products from your own collection. Then in the eye and lip categories, you'll see exactly what she's worn. A bit of blush searching led me to Taylor's 2009 Grammys look. Makeup artist Laurie Turk applied Steeler's convertible color in Poppy. She was actually quoted as saying Smashbox convertible color in Poppy, but that product doesn't exist. Steeler's definitely does. So I'm guessing the Smashbox bit was a typo. This is the very first cream blush formula I ever purchased many years ago, and if you're a regular viewer, you know it started a long love affair. Rose is the closest shade in my collection, and it's very similar to Poppy. Quite a deep flush of color. It's quite pigmented, so I only need to pat a tiny bit on. The only other bit of information I could track down from Laurie Turk was that she used the NARS multiple in Copacabana on Taylor at an awards night in 2012. Not something I own, unfortunately, but it gives us hope that Taylor might be into cream highlighters like I am. Some of my top stick picks in this category are Glossier Haloscope in Quartz, a shimmery pearlescent highlight, and Chanel's Barma Sentiel stick in Sculpting, which isn't really a sculpting product at all, it just creates a stunning dewy glow. In terms of bronzer, I came across a fun fact that Taylor reportedly uses the Bobbi Brown Shimmer Brick in bronze on her eyes. Love that she's a fan of multitasking makeup too. I don't own a shimmer brick, but I do love using bronzers as an easy eyeshadow too. When I want a simple brown with a tiny bit of shimmer, I love swiping on Charlotte Tilbury's Beach Stick in Ibiza, a summery bronze with a great creamy feel, or the Chanel Le Beige Blush Stick in number 20 is one of my holy grail makeup items. A beautiful blush texture in a soft, slightly rosy brown to warm up the face. Next, a few eye secrets were revealed in Taylor's Miss Americana documentary on Netflix this year. I was keeping my eyes peeled for any makeup clues and luckily there were quite a few. Pretty sure I spotted her holding the fuzzy brown packaging of the very first Urban Decay Naked palette, the most popular product back in the day. It was a classic for smoky eye looks. My personal favorite from the Naked family is Urban Decay Naked Heat, a warm, summery palette with a nice mix of shimmers and mattes that look great mixed together or worn individually as a wash of color all over the lid. On the January 2020 cover of British Vogue, Taylor's eyes were enhanced with pink tones from Pat McGrath's Divine Rose palette, which seems to be sold out absolutely everywhere. Let me know if you got your hands on it. I have a couple of pinky single shadows from Pat's range so I can channel Taylor's cover look. Pale Fire is a light shimmery pink shadow to open up the eyes, and Rose Venus is a deeper, almost coppery option in some lights, but it still has that nice hint of pink. I had a small makeup eureka moment while watching Taylor's documentary. As she sat applying her makeup on her private plane, as you do, I spotted an eyeliner tube I would recognize anywhere. Finally, I have an answer to how she creates those perfect cat eyes. Tom Ford's eye defining pen has been one of my favorites for years and she was using this to swoop on that great liner shape. This is a pricey double ended pen with a brush head on one side for sleek clean lines and a tiny felt tip on the other to be really precise or tidy up any gaps. It's one of the only liquid liner pens I I've used that actually made me feel like I could do liquid liner. For mascara, the documentary delivered again, I spotted this pale pink tube of Too Faced's Better Than Sex mascara. I've used a couple of travel minis in this formula over the years and really enjoyed it. It's lengthening and volumizing without looking too over the top. It's still quite natural and fluttery. Time to cover those cherry lips. It's been widely reported that the NARS Velvet Matte Lip Pencil in Dragon Girl is one of Taylor's favorite reds. It might even be the red she's wearing in the thumbnail of this video at the Met Gala in 2014 because she was pictured beforehand touching up her lip color with a NARS pencil and people seem to think that it looked like Dragon Girl. I love these comfortable matte pencils to draw on color precisely or smudge for a blurred look. 
This is a great vibrant scarlet red for instant Taylor 2012 album vibes. NARS Velvet Matte Lip Pencil in Dolce Vita is another shade that has been linked to Taylor over the years. I've had a little mini version of this for a long time and only recently upgraded to the full size late last year. A deep, sophisticated, dusty rose nude that instantly dresses up any outfit. During the reputation tour, Taylor wore an amazing vampy dark lip each night. Couldn't track down the exact shade, but given her apparent love of NARS lip pencils, here's an idea of something similar. The NARS Velvet Matte Lip Pencil in Train Bleu, a deep, dark purple berry that looks stunning with very minimal makeup elsewhere. See any of Rooney Mara's red carpet looks for inspiration. Another famous red we have in common. On Taylor's InStyle magazine cover back in November 2013, she was wearing Chanel Rouge Allure in 99 Pirate, one of the most classic reds in the whole beauty world in my opinion, and a shade that walks the line between warm and cool perfectly. An easy way to make a statement and feel put together. Finally, in the music video for her collab with Zayn, I Don't Wanna Live Forever, Taylor rocked a very glittery red lip. It was Pat McGrath's Lip Lust Kit in 004. Not sure I'm brave enough to go for a glittery lip, but I do love some of Pat's other reds. Vendetta in her matte transformula is such a deep, dark red tone. In the skincare department, I was delighted to read that Taylor is apparently a fan of Jo Leek's Lavender Hydrating Mist. They're a brand close to my heart from South Australia with a beautiful farm in the Adelaide Hills where the majority of their ingredients are grown. I'm a big fan of their Rose Water Balancing Mist. It's made many appearances on my channel, including my recent Australian Beauty Favourites video, but the lavender option is a really true to life, calming scent. A celebrity makeup artist called Lottie, who has previously worked with Taylor, gave an interview about how she preps her client's skin. So there's just a chance she's used these next two products on Taylor in the past. I absolutely love them, so I'm just going to imagine she does too. Bioderma is the famous French micellar water that's a celebrity and makeup artist favourite. It's been in many videos in this series. It's known as a great eye makeup remover, but I actually don't use it that way. Just as a quick way to remove face makeup before a gym class, or as a first cleanse, or to refresh my skin during travel. Cordley Beauty Elixir is a product makeup artist Lottie said she can't live without, so there's a pretty good chance she might have spritzed this heavenly mist on Taylor too. This has a peppermint and rosemary scent, so it feels like a little trip to a spa every time you spray it. Way back at the 2009 Grammys, Taylor's usual makeup artist Laurie Turk said she prepped her lips with Smith's Rosebud Salve, a classic lip balm choice with a delicious rose taste. Not the most hydrating balm on me, but I love the smooth texture and, as you know, anything rose related. I know what you're wondering. What does Taylor Swift's house smell like? Thanks to fans lucky enough to be invited into her homes for her album listening parties, we now know. In her Vogue 73 questions video, the very last question was what is your favourite candle? And Taylor said, by Rado Treehouse. It's a really woody scent and heavier than what I usually like. She also burns the famous La Labo Santal 26 scent apparently. The only by Rado candle in my collection is Rosewater, a dreamy, realistic rosewater scent like Turkish Delight. If anyone has any tips on how to burn by Rado candles evenly, that would be much appreciated. Haven't had too much luck so far. Taylor, if you're watching, let me know. If you want your bathroom to smell as gorgeous as a Swift song, Jo Malone's Pomegranate Noir Hand and Body Wash is what you'll find tucked away in Taylor's house. I actually haven't come across that Jo Malone scent before, so let me know if you're a fan of it. My go-to from the brand is Red Roses. It's my favourite light floral perfume, and I was given the matching hand wash as a present recently too. Last but not least, nails. I loved the clip in the Miss Americana documentary where she joked about opening her own nail salon. Taylor is apparently an at-home Manny fan like me because because she quote, really likes having cute nails but really can't go out in public. You can find my at home mani tutorial on my channel with all of my tips and tricks, but let's take a look at some similar shades that fit what Taylor usually wears. As part of her Vogue Australia cover story in 2015, Taylor was wearing the nude beige Essie shade BFF Best Boyfriend on her nails and Chanel black satin on her toes. I don't have that exact shiny jet black shade, but I loved Chanel's noir ceramic back in the day with a slight hint of shimmer to it. Then close beige nudes in my collection would be Essie, Topless and Barefoot, or OPI, Samoan Sand. A few other similar Swift shade suggestions. She certainly had an excellent red era, easily one of my favourite Taylor albums, so one of my favourites is the warm red Essie Rock the Runway, swatched in my recent Most Worn Polish video, and today I'm wearing OPI Big Apple Red to celebrate our mutual obsession with New York City. Taylor has had quite a lot of outings with blue on her nails, not a shade I have much of in my collection, but Olive and June from LA make a couple of nice shades. Be 
CP, a pretty baby blue that is now available in Target across the US, and CNH, a bolder blue jeans kind of colour. When I was looking for photos of Taylor's nail polish choices and trying to establish a bit of a pattern, shimmery shades actually jumped out a lot. Again, not something I have too much of, but I'll be channeling her with this metallic rose gold shade OJSM from Olive and June again. There you go. Hope you enjoyed learning about products Taylor has worn or mentioned over the years, plus a few other ideas of how to channel her style. Did you spot any matching favourite products here? Let me know if you plan to recreate her look. And please share your favourite Taylor album or song, of course. I have many more stars researched and ready to film. About 40 people are coming up, but these videos take the longest time to put together, about 25 hours each, so I wish I could film them more often. But stay tuned, there are many more on the way. Thanks for watching, see you next time.